Hello and welcome to Grizzly and Bear of the land with Lee and Steffi. Feeling a bit funny actually, like uh, this is our last drive pretty much of our Grizzly and Bear here in Australia, the final leg into Melbourne city. Our final campsite feels a little bit strange to be honest. A little bit emotional and I'm sure it's gonna be emotional but it's also super exciting. Thank you to our very good friends Chris and Fiona. Now Chris and Fiona have got this warehouse here in Melbourne who they have been so very generous to allow us to camp out here and prepare for the shipping. But it's always a big job. This time not as intense as it was in Taiwan because obviously shipping to Australia is one of the most complicated and stressful and difficult places to ship your own vehicle as an overlander. Anyway, still getting the car nice and clean, the camper nice and clean. We're gonna do a massive sort out like we do regularly, decide what we really need for the next adventure, what we don't and just sort of minimize so we start on a new continent fresh and ready to go. That day we had some visitors, Inga and Torben, a couple from Germany who just spent four years in Australia. We will be sharing a 40-foot container with them. One thing we like to do pretty regularly is look after the canvas, the soft sides on our four-wheel camper. How do we keep it in such good condition? And it is in very good condition. This camper is coming on nine years old now. This is the stuff we use. Now it's called 303. We've got no, we're not selling any uh, plugs here. We're not making any money off this thing. It's amazing. So you put this stuff on, you wipe it all over the sides and then just follow straight up and wipe it off. This is the marine plywood that we have as a base to our camper. With all of the, uh, the water and moisture and rain we've had in Australia, it's uh, started to get a bit mouldy under there. Wiped it all down with vinegar, we let it dry out, and now I'm just painting it with an exterior paint to seal it, and I'll give it a couple of coats, and that should hopefully might stop it, but it'll protect it better from the mould. Why is it not black? Oh, because they didn't have black at the shop. <laughs> we just uh, received an exciting phone call from our shipping agent, his name is Martin, and he's waiting for us and we're gonna go drop our Canada Passage. Yesterday we dropped the carne off, that all went very well. The shipping agent Martin is a really nice guy. His company is called Clark Global. He knows how important our vehicles are to us. They're our full-time home, they're everything. So he was really nice, very professional. Rooty flavors down here at the end. Okay. And then we just have to decide and then we put that into uh, the bottles and, and right. dilute it down with some reverse osmosis water. Uh -huh. That's gin making, basically. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris from Port Phillip Distillery. We're really fortunate enough to have Steffi and Lee here with us. Steph's just asked me to do a little bit about the gins. So we make three gins. This is the first gin that we make, Hal's Bells, and this is a London dry gin. It's your traditional gin. It's like your Gordon gin, your Bombay. And this has done really well. This has picked up silver in the International Spirits Awards as well as the Australian Gin Awards. We're really happy with this one. And we called it Hal's Bells and this one's named after my first wife. Her name was Helen and uh, this is in homage to Helen. The second gin we have is an Australian botanical gin. We named this one after my second partner, Insanity. Modern Australian gin. So it's got things like wattle seed and, and lemon myrtle in it, uh, Tasmanian pepper berries, and it's a beautiful gin. And I think, Steph, if I remember, I think this was your favorite. It's super easy to drink. The last gin that we've made is our Navy Strength gin. And this one's called uh, Fiona's Fury. Yes, you guessed it. It's named after my lovely wife, Fiona, now. It's 57%, and it's probably one of the smoothest navy strengths. We serve this one with rosemary. It makes a great gin. We also have a little gin bar as well. It's called the Gin Dispensary. We sell mainly uh, Australian gins and mostly Victorian. Cocktails are amazing. Steph will vouch for it. You don't get a hangover on our cocktails. They're incredibly good. Our last night in the camper. Emotional? Exciting. 
This is our final day with our grizzly and bear here in Australia. And it's always a little bit emotional. You wake up, you're excited, but you're also a little bit sad. You know, it's a pretty daunting thing. And I'm happy we don't do it so regularly, this whole shipping process. I'm cleaning the fridge right now. The fridge is all clean and dry. Clothes I'm gonna be wearing for the next three months. This is what I usually use to clean. When I'm cleaning, I like to wear a headlamp so I can really see what's going on. We've put water in our water tanks and a mild um, bleach or your yeah, straight bleach, which is the same thing as chlorine, a solution in there and the reason for that is obviously to ensure that there's no bacteria or mold build up on the two to three month voyage very important don't forget that you have that stronger solution in there because that's not making the water safe to drink and that will require a very thorough flushing with fresh water at the other end we are nearly ready to load the camper back onto the ute so what we do is we drop the rear tailgate and that reduces our length new entrance do you like my new step we dropped the tailgate we don't have a step anymore and it's pretty high so because i don't want to injure myself i got my what do you call this ladder no. we washed the bedding as well and we made sure it was super super dry I made sure it was very dry and neat Chris and Fiona they have generously offered us a place to stay at their house they've got a spare room so in order to prevent or do our very best to have zero condensation zero moisture inside this camper we won't sleep in it tonight Disconnecting the electrical. I will be disconnecting the positive lead only. That big bad boy there goes to the inverter. And I'll tape that up with electrical tape. And I'll also do the same in here. Just had a phone call. My mate, Jai Crosby, is here to visit us now. Jai is the reason that we live in a four-wheel camper. This particular four-wheel camper. So yeah, pretty exciting. Haven't seen him for probably six or seven years, I would say. Good morning, it's a quarter to seven and this is the absolute last drive of Grizzly and Bear in Australia. We've got 38 kilometers to go to the container. Well, it's not gonna be the nicest drive, I don't think. <laughs> coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> we did have a later night last night, catching up with my old mate Jai. Great night, Chris and Fiona were there. But yeah, it was late and we've only had about five hours sleep. We got a grizzly and bear coffee. Oh, that looks like a good one. At the shipyard, we've met Inga and Torben again. Adam was also there to help us. <laughs> it's happening! I can't believe it! Pretty excited. Oh, it doesn't feel real yet. We wait for this day for, I don't know, half a year. So, <laughs> finally! Woo Moisture absorber. <laughs> to not mold, get mold in the car in the next month. Or two months, probably. We put moisture absorbers inside the container not inside the vehicle this time and keep the windows open we were so lucky with the weather that day reducing the chances of mold on the other end making the process way less stressful it's a good round nice and warm we used four heavy-duty ratchet straps on each vehicle to stop any sort of movement. Try not to get myself too gassed by the diesel fumes, but we're going to reverse in. Both vehicles reversed in. 
to ensure that it's uh, easy unloading at the other end. Down on your right a little bit. So the ratchet straps that, that we've got are not going to fit through the D-rings on the bottom of the container, so we might have to cut that off. Oh yeah, mate. See, I have seen it. There we go. That'll do. That'll do, mate. And we can even go in that way. Look at that. Right hand down forward, okay? Yep. Okay. We thought we might try and get it in with the awning on this time. We could have, but it's just too tight. So we've taken the safer option like we did from Taiwan to Fremantle. We've removed the side awning. Defenders are quite narrow in that respect, which is good. It's just the camper that's just, wide. Just fit. <laughs> I'm going to pull them like diagonally against each other. Big oh, team oh, effort. No, no, that's cool. I feel a bit lazy. <laughs> no, that's alright. We'll let you off. The 40 foot container being higher than a standard 20 foot. No need to deflate the tires this time. We blocked a tire between two pieces of wood drilled into the floor of the container. Torben, do you want me to put the other two on yours? Oh, if you want to. Yeah, yeah I might as well. Right. Have uh, a fantastic, safe trip. It's another. Off it is there. Unfortunately, our container was a bit old and deformed, making it very difficult to close the doors. on the other side. It was far off from lining up.
Uh, I see the container finally after mm -hmm. uh, four hours. <laughs> so I just put it in, yeah? Yeah, it's right in there. Oh, oh, oh! Look at that. Now it's closed. That's it. <laughs> That's it. There is in the container. This might take up to three months. It's always uh, emotional to leave the car and your brain goes, oh my God, what's going to happen to that container? It's going to go to so many places and so I just forget about it. That's it. The car is gone on its way to some new adventures, a new chapter. Thank you all for your support and we hope to see you next week. Until then, take care. Bye bye.